Let's make a cell phone docking station. Ah, my knee! Today we're going to be going pretty in depth with this project because there are a lot of things to talk about from how to build it, which bits to use, and then how to actually price it, which we'll be getting into later. But first and foremost, I do want to talk on the fact that we are going to be using all three of our HD beginner bits. Those are the only three bits that you need to see and see with me, and we're going to be using all three on this project. But you really could just use two or just one, which we'll be getting into a little bit later. But I want to show you all the capabilities of this project and just how easy it is to do. Secondly, I want to bring up this material. You do not need to use this material. I'm just showing this off and using this because I'm going to be using this project specifically on my desk. And this project is going to directly match a headphone stand that I made like over a year ago. This is rich light and it is a half inch material. This 12 by 12 by half inch material cost $40, but we're going to be cutting out two versions of this project, which is going to get into pricing later on. So accounting for all of that, we're not going to have a ton of different work holding options because I'm going to be using as much space of this material as possible, which is why I'm going to be using double-sided tape. Now this double-sided tape is very similar to carpet tape. It's a little bit thicker and there's a little bit more give to it. Uh, certainly different types of wood that you attach to it, like a specifically white oak that I've used double-sided tape on it, it might react strangely to it and really hold a lot harder than it actually should. Uh, but I'm not gonna have any trouble with that today, specifically with this rich light. What rich light is, it is compressed paper and resin. So it is a very thick, solid material. It's completely waterproof. They use it a ton in different spaces, mainly commercial kitchens and stuff like that. You can actually find this material sometimes pretty darn cheap on Amazon if you're looking for dishwasher safe uh, cutting boards. This is the same stuff that if you go to like Longhorn Grill and they bring out that little loaf of bread, this is the material that that loaf of bread sits on so they can quickly and easily throw that into their uh, commercial dishwashers and not have to worry about wooden stuff. So it's a pretty cool material, but there are a few caveats. If you're using a very thin bit, like an eighth inch bit or something like that, uh, you might have a little bit of deflection in it because it is very rock solid. So go pretty easy on your feeds and speeds when directly dealing with this. Now the other option is going to be putting blue tape, completely putting blue tape down on the back of this material as well as your spoil board, and then putting down some CA glue and then gluing it to the tape so that it's easily removed. I personally don't like that method, but I know a ton of people do. It's especially helpful when you're using like small uh, metal blanks. Morgan over at Winfinity just released an awesome video about machining a brass blank so that you can use it to make your own branding iron. I'll have that link down in the description, but he uses tape and CA glue and it works fantastic. So I would definitely use it for metal. Whereas this, it does have a little bit of give and shake to it um, if you're measuring that very small amount. For the normal person, this is gonna work just fine. One caveat though, is you can see that my spoil board is torn up. It's been a very long time since I've surfaced it and I probably just need to replace the entire thing. But the less surface area that you have in contact with this double-sided tape, uh, the more chance of failure there's going to be. So just know that if you have a highly gouged surface like this, it's not going to have as much contact for the adhesive to actually stick to it. So that is something to think about. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and put this down on the table and then we're going to first and foremost put in our groovy Jenny. And the reason we're doing that is just to be able to really identify that corner. And we're gonna run our 60 degree V-bit first. And with that V-bit, we're really just gonna be putting in our logo to show off the capability of where you can put a logo on the cell phone holder. And then we're gonna be switching over to our bowl cut bit. So once we've already found our X and Y, and we have a pinpoint location with the groovy Jenny. Once we've put our bowl bit in, all we're doing is we're establishing our Z height. So it really doesn't matter if we get exactly on the corner because we're just resetting our Z. And once we run that, that's going to create a little pocket that our cell phones are going to rest in. This uh, isn't really gonna take much time at all. And then after that, we're gonna be switching over to our downtown Ginny. And our downtown Ginny is where it's gonna be doing all of our profile cuts. Since these parts are kind of smashed in next to each other, I'm not really leaving a ton of room to be able to leave any types of tabs or bridges so that the excess material is being held together and really giving us as much opportunity for not failure as possible. That downtown Jenny, we're taking it pretty slow and this material, like I did talk about, is a very, very solid material. So your step down, you might wanna go a little bit lighter on that. Once we are done with our downtown Jenny, we should have our parts ready to be separated from the rest of the material and ready to be assembled into our two version of our cell phone docking stations. Happy accident has occurred that we will take. So I essentially have onion skinned this project, which means you're leaving just like the very smallest amount at the very bottom instead of profiling all the way through your material, which is not something that I meant to do. Um, I think I just had gotten off a little bit with my Z height while I was probing. Nice. Looks pretty good, right? 
something with tabs that I want to talk about is if you were to go from the back and push it out, that's going to have this little excess material and it's going to cause a divot back here. But if you were to be from the front and push it backwards, that's going to help the tab break just a little bit cleaner and it's not going to take out any of the back material. Now, a foolproof way to not have either of those things happen is with a chisel. All right, one, two, three, and four. It is such a weird and cool material. All right, these are gonna fit nice and tight. Oh yeah, these are gonna fit awesome. I'm gonna be doing a little bit of routing before I join these because that'll give us a little bit more wiggle room. So the tightness is also something that I wanna talk about when I go into pricing. Tons to talk about with these. So let's go ahead and put a round over on these. Super cool material and oil does make it look nice and leathery. Here's a red piece that I'm planning on using for a future project. And the material is just so freaking awesome. Um, so product pictures wise, looks really good. Finished pr product, really, really good. Very expensive. This week's mystery file is brought to you by freezing temperatures. I do not want to be in the shop right now, but Mitz has our mystery file, which means that he's given me mystery G code. I have uploaded it into the Masso controller for our Winfinity CNC machine, and we're about to make a cut. Now, essentially I've been told that this week Mitz has gotten a little bit ambitious. We're using all three of the HD beginner bits. First and foremost, we're gonna be starting off with a bull bit, and then that's gonna do something, who knows? Then we're gonna be switching over to our 60 degree groovy Ginny bit. Who knows what that's gonna do. And then finally, we're gonna finish this up with our downtown Jenny, or quarter inch down shear bit. And then we're gonna see what mitts has made for us. Well, besides me cutting open my finger and bleeding over everything and then not realizing it because it's so cold, it went great. So this is the first like functional part that Mitz has had me cut out. And this is out of MDF. I, I kind of wish that I'd have done it out of hardwood like he had suggested at the beginning. But hey, you know, you live, you learn. You gotta trust Mitz. So it's got a lid and it's got my logo on the inside. So cool. Thanks, Mitz. Well, I finally got to use my new Christmas present, which is this DeWalt cordless uh, router. And it worked great. I used a very, very tiny round over bit that I'll have linked down below and it is perfect for half inch material. I'm extremely excited about that. And it has the exact same radius as the bowl cut bit does. So things match up pretty well. After that, I went ahead and sanded all of the parts and then I took them over and dunked them in mineral oil, which is not what you need to do. I was being absolutely silly. You really just need to dab a little bit of mineral oil on and then wipe them all over these because it's not soaking into resin, but it definitely does make it look better on the very surface. It gives it this nice leathery feel to it. So what we have here are our four completed parts. And this is essentially going to be making two different versions of our cell phone docking station. Now we have so much to go over, and I really want to reiterate that you do not need to use rich light, mainly because these files are made and optimized for half inch plywood. Now, if you're sending this to a customer and they got their logo engraved or their last name or whatever, and you have of course flat packed this because this right here you can ship for extremely cheaply, but then the second that you make this into the object that it's supposed to be, it becomes twice as much to ship. So of course you want to flat pack this. If a customer gets this and it's just hard to push in, they might have a bad time. But if a customer gets this and they slot it together too easily and then they go to pick it up and it falls apart, they might have something to say about it as well. That's where tolerances are incredibly important when creating the objects that you're looking to make, especially when you're making them for customers, just thinking about the experience that they're going to have. Now, I have seen stuff online that people design two portions of a heart or something like that, and then they will engrave somebody's last name or first name, two people, maybe they're dating or married or whatever, and then they get it like this and the tolerances are so tight that they tell them that they need to use a mallet and pound it together like this. One second, it's gonna be very loud. Once they have completely joined those parts together, they're not coming apart. It's like a marketing thing with it, which honestly is incredibly clever. Now, this is our first one. It is the more simple design of the two. And as you can see right here, you're just able to set your phone in and it sits on your desk. We've got this nice cutout right here so that if you're charging your phone and you have your cord, it can just sit right there. Obviously, if you're a little bit more in depth with your CNC machine, you could create this where you could cut out a small pocket in the back and put in a wireless charger. But for this, this is really just what we're looking for. The other version, like I said, just as simple, but you can also have your watch on it. Ah, there we go. All right, so 
we have our two different versions. This one works exactly the same. It just has a portion over to the side where you can loop a watch, Apple watch, regular watch, doesn't matter. It is a perfect place to be able to throw your things at the end of the day. The really nice thing about these in particular is there is a lot of real estate to be able to brand these or to personalize them in some way. That is the main thing that you have going for you is your ability to personalize things quickly and easily for that specific customer. That's why a lot of people are going to Etsy instead of to Amazon. Now, when looking at these two different projects, it did cost $40 to make both of these, which normally for most people, that's gonna be a big killer. If somebody sees this at a craft show, they might think that this is worth $20 alone, when in reality, it's $20 in material, not even counting the amount of time that it took to cut out, which in this case is, it was less than seven minutes for both of these. So around three minutes a piece to be able to cut these out. These files are fully optimized to be able to take a sheet of half inch plywood and cut a ton of these things out so that you can use your time the best way possible. Now, that's one of my rules for creating products specifically to sell is the time needed to go into engraving these. And that's why I'm so excited about doing my first webinar. I'll be going over my entire product brainstorming process live with all the members over there so that y'all can see exactly how I do things and then we'll come up with a product together. If you are not a member of CNC with me right now is the perfect time to join because it is founding members month, which means that there are a ton of perks and stuff if you'd like to go ahead and check that out at CNC with me.com. It is so cold right now. I know that like all the people north have like snow and everything, but I'm in Atlanta and this is real cold. This specifically really aligns with an impulse purchase product and making something as cheaply as possible, but also appealing. Now earlier I talked about how you can make all of this out of one single bit. And all you really need to do is do the profile cuts and then this area right here where your cell phone sits, instead of having one of our bowl cut bits, you just use a straight bit and still just have a little ledge for your phone to sit in. It's an extremely simple project to make and something that you can be quite proud of. For these, like I said, it's gonna be sitting on my desk. Actually, I haven't even shown you all the headphone stand. Let me go grab that. It now matches. And I've got a few other things that I am hoping to be able to put alongside with it so it makes its own little set. But all these things can easily be made with plywood and will look just as good, especially if you're using something that's veneered, like a maple or a walnut type of plywood, it's gonna set aside your project that much more. And if you're using V-bit carving in it, it's gonna create a little bit of a two-tone color that's gonna look pretty cool if you're personalizing your objects. So these, when somebody first picks it up, it's extremely solid, it's not wobbling, nothing's slipping out. Uh, somebody's gonna look at this and think that is a very good finished product. If they do pick it up and it starts falling apart, they're gonna think, oh, this wasn't made correctly. Now, I will be having a complete toolpath tutorial on this on CNC with me for anybody who's interested in all the depths that we used and figuring out all the little nitty gritty steps. CNC with me has passed 300 members. And the really cool thing is if you are a founding member, I'm going to be making a plaque in my shop which originally I thought was going to be considerably smaller than it's turning out to be. And I'll be using my fiber laser and engraving every single founding member's name into brass and that will be hanging in my shop forever. We have some awesome things coming and I'm just so excited that y'all are along for the ride. I have been working so hard behind the scenes. Mitz has been working incredibly hard behind the scenes and we have so much that we're ready to share with y'all. And this is how the year is gonna be going. Just simple projects that you can wrap your head around. If you don't wanna toolpath them yourselves, we have the CarveCo and Vectric files that are already ready to go with predefined instructions on how to cut those things out. CNC with me is something that has never existed before, so it is currently evolving into what it needs to be. And I am just so excited that so many people have taken the plunge and have decided to join me alongside that ride. Thank y'all so much. I really appreciate y'all stopping by and I will be seeing y'all next Friday. Bye.